Okay, so let's let's look at uh, let's look at something, shall we? Um, I'm offering gas cards to my staff. The first one that finds this, because I know I read about it uh, before Ukraine. Um, the one of the things that the uh, Fed was looking to do to control inflation was create demand destruction. And I know I read it a couple of months ago, three months ago, because um, I didn't really understand what demand destruction was. Demand destruction is something that happened to us in the 1970s. If you were alive, you'll remember this. If you weren't, just go with me for a second. We had uh, OPEC cut off our oil, and we had an oil crisis. And price of gas went through the roof, and we had shortages. People had to have you know, a certain license plate. If you had an odd number license plate, you could buy it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, if you had an even, you would get it Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And that was just to keep the gas lines from forming because they were so long. It was crazy. Uh, and what happened? Well, back in the 1970s, we were making these boats for cars. I mean, they were enormous, enormous. I don't even, honestly, I, I, I'd love to open up some of the hoods of some of these old, like, remember the old Continental Mark IV or V? And it was like the size of a car. The hood was the size of a car. I don't, I have to look into one because the engine must have seemed really small in that giant space. But we made these cars the bigger, the better. And then the oil crisis hit. And it wasn't bigger, the better. Uh, it was the exact opposite. People couldn't afford to drive those boats at eight miles a gallon. So there was a country that was making little teeny cars that, that were very fuel efficient, and that country was Japan. This is what put Japan on the map uh, after World War II. Japan was still known kind of as this country that made crappy things, and it all really stemmed from, the, from their grenades that they used in World War II. Uh, they never really went off. And so the, the guys came back from the World War II from Asia, and they were like, yeah, made in Japan, man. It means it doesn't work because their grenades usually didn't go off. But they uh, were making very small cars called a Honda CVCC. And it was, a, uh, it was an engine, a motorcycle engine that had been turned sideways. And it, it, honestly, it looked like a clown car. And it never sold anything in America until the oil crisis. Then it took off and Honda became Honda. Okay? That's demand destruction. You have something that is so high priced that people are like, I can't buy it anymore. And then they'll find ways, if they have to have it, like transportation, they'll find ways to use less of it. For instance, in the 70s, we got rid of all the big boats, and we that fleet changed on a dime. People were not driving those huge cars in the 1980s. They were gone because people couldn't afford to drive them. So that's demand destruction, and it allows something else to take off like Honda. Okay. We're in demand destruction right now with oil, and uh, it's going to... It's going to cause us to use, uh, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I guess we found, uh, one of my, one of my uh, producers just found an article on it. Um, I think this is being orchestrated. I, I think this is another thing that just didn't feel right. I think our demand destruction of oil was orchestrated. It's going to keep us uh, off of gasoline and and uh, looking for new sources of energy because we just can't afford it. Okay. But it also slows down the economy. And what was the Fed saying before all of this? The economy is overheating. Did you feel like our economy was overheating? Because I didn't feel like our economy was overheating. I didn't feel like we were in the Trump days when things were really good. Did you? I mean, it depends on what they mean. I mean, there was that 
that thing where a lot of businesses were looking for employees and no one was showing up to work. Correct. Right? That, Correct. That, that level of it, but it wasn't like we were in a great economic time. Correct. No, like not at all. all. We were coming back. Yeah, coming back. We were back coming back. From a right. real big downturn. Okay, so here's here's what's uh, happening. And I, w- I want to explain, I want you to understand um, why I say it's really bad to get off Russian oil without opening up our own oil fields, okay? It is the best thing we can do. We, ha- we, I like that morally we're trying to help Ukraine, and we do it by canceling, cutting off their blood supply over in Russia. But we're also cutting it off here and the rest of the world. When you think of a barrel of oil, I want you to think that every time if you have, let's say you, you know, you have 20 gallon tank, every time you fill up, you're using one barrel of oil. One barrel of oil will only uh, produce, it's like 19 and a half gallons of gasoline. Okay. That's pretty remarkable uh, that it is that low. That leaves over half of the oil not able to be turned into gasoline. So it's turned into other things. So I want you to understand if the price of gasoline is going up because of the oil shock, there are a few other things that are made from that other about 55%. Let me just give you a couple of them. Solvents, diesel fuel, motor oil, bearing grease, ink, floor wax, ballpoint pins, football cleats, insecticides, boats, sweaters, upholstery, bicycle tires, sports car bodies, nail polish, fishing lures, perfumes, golf bags, tires, dresses, cassettes, uh, dishwasher parts, toolboxes, shoe polish, uh, transparent tape, petroleum jelly, caulking, motorcycle helmets, CD players, Faucet watchers, antiseptics, clotheslines, curtains, food preservatives, baseballs, basketballs, soap, vitamin capsules, antihistamines, purses, shoes, dashboards, cortisone, deodorant, shoelace aglets, putty, dyes, pantyhose, refrigerants, linings, rubber, uh, rubbing alcohol, life jackets, percolators, skis, TV cabinets, shag rugs, electrician's tape. Uh, Paint, epoxy, car battery cases, tool racks, mops, slacks, insect repellent, oil filters, hair coloring, fertilizers, yarn, and umbrellas. And roofing, toilet seats, fishing rods, lipstick, denture adhesives, linoleum, ice cube trays, synthetic rubber, speakers, plastic wood, electric blankets, glycerin, dice, fishing boats, rubber cement, tennis rackets, nylon rope, Candles, trash bags, house paint, water pipes, uh, and uh, hand lotion, and roller skates, and surfboards, and shampoo, wheels, um, paint rollers, shower curtains, safety glasses, aspirin, luggage, guitar strings, antifreeze, football helmets, awnings, eyeglasses, clothes, toothbrushes, uh, ice chest, footballs, combs, CDs, DVDs, paintbrushes, detergents, tents, Uh, Balloons, vaporizers, heart valves, crayons, parachutes, telephones, enamel, pillows, dishes, cameras, and uh, anesthetics. Uh, um, Let's see. Artificial turf, turf, artificial limbs, bandages, hair curlers, folding doors, model cars, dentures, cold cream, movie film, soft contact lenses, drinking cups, ammonia, shaving cream, car enamel, fan belts, refrigerators, golf balls. And, of course, toothpaste. I'm sorry, gasoline. Okay. But other than that. But other than that. Yeah. But other than that. Okay. So now, here's what's happening. When you take that uh, under half a barrel of oil, that is made into gasoline. Each barrel of oil is about 20 gallons of gas. That's remarkably low. I always thought it was much more than that. The rest of it goes into these refineries and they are doing something. Uh, these refineries become crackers, not crack us, but crackers. What does a cracker do? 
a cracker takes the remaining part of the oil and breaks it up through high pressure and heat and uh, takes the molecules and breaks them apart and then says, okay, we're going to make styrofoams. We're going to make uh, we're going to make motor oil. We're going to take these uh, molecules and we're going to make, um, you know, uh, car bodies, whatever, uh, car interiors, glasses, any of these other things. That's what a cracker does. That is always running at 100 percent because there's never enough styrofoam and plastic to cover all the meat. So we always run these things 100% capacity. They are now being backed off to 80% capacity because the crackers run by crackers, I would assume. Uh, Oh my gosh, why would you assume that? Well, because they're evil. That's why. Anyway, the crackers running the crackers say we can't make enough money because there's going to be a, uh, a price dis- uh, destruction. There's going to be demand destruction. People aren't going to want that little plaything for their baby made out of plastic because it's going to cost way too much money. So if you thought that there was a problem with supply and demand, you ain't seen nothing yet. And when people are telling you, well, we're willing to pay higher prices for gas, Mm -hmm. are you? Because I've never met that person before. Never. Uh, Well, Stephen Colbert, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Yeah, Um, that's a fascinating one, too, because he doesn't care because he says he drives a Tesla. Yeah. Totally ignoring the fact that this is not just an oil crisis. It's an energy crisis. Right. It's a it's a um, rare metals crisis. And rare minerals crisis. Right. For example, guess what gets put into every Tesla? A lot of it. Nickel. Nickel. Just exploding in price. Went up $67 yeah. yesterday. Nickel. And it's China and Russia who control all of this stuff. Oh, wait a minute. So go what? ahead with your electric cars and act as if it makes us you know, less uh, energy independent. And when you see the price of everything going up. Just remember, the people who are leading you to this are the ones that say we have to get rid of fossil fuels. <laughs> Less than half of each barrel goes to gasoline. The rest of that barrel goes to make everything else we have grown accustomed to. Everything else. So when you think that your friends tell you, well, the price, it's worth it, really, You cannot disconnect the price of oil and the price of gasoline to the price of food or plastic or anything else that you are used to buying. Demand destruction is going is coming and it is coming fast. 